With our unique Flex Hours program, you can start your day at 814 or even 755. So long as it's cutting into your time, we're Flex Hourable. Finally, there's a wide array of perks. Daily toilet paper allowance, chairs for earners, subsidized pens, air for earners, unrestricted inter-office phone calls, two-way stairs, a mostly pest-free environment, free passes to already free events, Bikram filing, take your mistress to work day, emergency exits for senior personnel only. Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. It is, once again, Solo Darren. I actually have been getting some responses to the last Solo episode, so here we are. Uh, it hasn't been too long, but it's been long enough. It was the beginning of fall. It is less than 50 days before the midterm elections in the States. Lots of stuff. See, right now, I, I sit down to record this, and I see breaking news. New York Attorney General James is announcing that they are bringing charges against Donald Trump, the Trump Organization, Eric, Ivanka, and Jr. Uh, that seems to be related to the investigation into the... Financial fraud or manipulation. I don't know. Banks get really mad when you lie to them. It's one of the only times rich people get in trouble. Really quick on that, I guess, is I think that it has to do with inflating the evaluation and changing the way things are evaluated and reporting one set of numbers like this property is worth this much. Telling whoever it is that it's worth less money when it comes to how much he has to pay for it and tax breaks and things, and then increasing the value for other gains. So it's, it seems to be in relation to the fluctuating valuations of various properties, uh, things that people have been talking about for quite some time. A couple things that uh, have been suggested as being focuses of the investigation are um, an apartment that uh, Donald Trump owned or owns in New York. They said that it was about 30,000 square feet and evaluated it at the price of 30,000 square feet at being $327 million, but it is, I think the me uh, the measurement is between eleven and 12,000 feet. And there was a building, or there is a building on Wall Street, and uh, like I said, it had something to do with appraisals and stuff for... Uh, lending and in insurance and stuff like that and tax breaks uh but there there was one building that uh it was appraised in some way or another in 2010 and it was valued at 200 million that was i think the first appraisal that it had then uh, in 2011 it was appraised in some way or another possibly not in the same way and then it was said to be valued at $524 million. Then in 2012, the next year, there were conflicting things that I thought I saw. And maybe it was both in the same year, but I saw $220 million and $527 million. And then in 2013, another appraisal in some way or another... Uh, said 530 million so that's a lot 
that's usually that that's something that wouldn't be explained away by a simple accounting error and there seems to be a pattern around taking out loans or uh other other things like i said banks banks get mad when you when you lie to them <laughs> it's usually it's one of the few times that rich people are likely to get in trouble because they're still not as rich as the bank uh, depending on what they think they might have found, they could defer or refer some of the charges to the Southern District of New York and possibly even the IRS or the Department of Justice or something like that. Uh, no, really quick, those 87,000 IRS agents that you might hear some uh, right-wing people talking about. Uh, without m looking into it much, uh, it took me about five minutes to see that it's 87,000 people over 10 years. And it's not just the people who, whatever, kick, kick down the rich. You know how the IRS is all, always sticking it to big business and the wealthy. Oh, wait, no, they don't because they actually have said that they don't have enough staff so they really focus on people who can't defend themselves in court. And that's the, that was the general practice before now. So the IRS has always been an asshole. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, 87,000 over 10 years. So, yeah, like, like that's, that's the thing with doing one of these topical episodes is you sit there, there's usually some sort of thing coming out, so... I've had a couple people, like I said, this is another psycho cast, if I didn't say that already. And feedback. I'm just sort of half giddy over, over this feedback and some questions. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to get to all of it. Some of the things I think might be better done with a person or people. I, there was... Uh, I don't think I could really do justice to the whole conversation around the overuse of the word woke. That'll easily be a show. Uh, you know who you are, who asked. I'm keeping the questions anonymous because I didn't talk to anybody about using their names. Also, similar with the upcoming election, I might get into that on these other things, but I know that was a lot of what the last episode was on. And there's probably going to be something else like this before the election. We'll see where we are when I've gone through some of these other ones. See? It's me by myself. You thought tangents were an issue before. One of the things that was talked about uh, was the DCCC strategy that they used back when they had chosen Hillary Clinton as their nominee and they thought, let's put some support behind these Republicans that are too batty to actually win the general election. And then we, not the only reason why, but that's when we got Donald Trump and Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, and fucking Madison Cawthorn, <laughs> and other people like that. So it's not necessarily always a winning strategy, but on, on the razor's edge of having the best chance they've had in a long time to gain seats or not lose a whole bunch of seats. They're going back to the not tried and true thing of uh, or method of putting some support behind the supposedly easier to beat lunatic fringe uh, Republican blah, you know, QAnon type Republican characters. And like I said in the lead up to that, 
in some of the bigger cases of that attempt, that did not help. At the very least, it didn't help. And we got some bad results. And I think that that was under, I can't remember when uh, she's, a, I think she still is a representative from Illinois, something representative, somebody Bustos. Um, but I saw that she, she is not running the DCCC anymore. And, but she had commented when asked about trying it again. And she just kept saying, you can't govern if you don't win. But when pushed on, well, here's these instances where that didn't work. <laughs> that where we ended up elevating a character that went on to win the full election. And the mantra seems to be, you can't govern if you don't win. And I'm not going to second guess that process. So I don't know. I feel like the Democratic Party is always working hard to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory or at the very least more concern against those to the left of the party than those uh, uh, to the right. I don't know if that's that addresses that particular question about uh, the Dems backing quote unquote easier candidates in the primaries. I can go more more into that. There is the thing that happened recently, not here in Ohio, but here in Ohio, away from Columbus. Uh, there was the interesting Trump JD Vance rally that they decided to have at the same time as two Ohio college football teams were playing against each other. And I guess that's my generalization. I kind of figure that a lot of their base are college football fans, but I mean, what do I know? During that, there was, uh, at the end of the ex-presidential ramble, that is t uh, traditional for these rallies. They started playing this like fan made YouTube QAnon song. And I don't know if he was going for a free verse or if he just is really bad at rhythm. I mean, play adding the music and he did not adjust his speech to it at all. It was just kind of, two conflicting annoyances but the song was called either the letters yeah where we go one we go all so i don't know if it's just the letters from that or if it was the words because it's on youtube you see it in a couple different ways but there were a bunch of people just holding their fingers up up in the air in a i don't know a semi Nazi salute, but with the finger, or if it's, I don't, I don't, I haven't checked in on Q and on people lately. Is ET involved? Is it a big, ouch? And they're all just expressing their pain that they're hearing the same speech in Youngstown as they've been hearing every other time. I don't know. But f from a quick glance, it seemed that in the general studiers of Q people, they presume that that's what that salute means. But uh, considering the slogan being common and that being uh, related to the title of the song that was playing, but it's not a very common thing. So this could be a new weird thing to see. I don't know if it's going to be the new OK finger symbol or what. What else was there to be talked about? Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott, governors of Florida and Texas, respectively, being not necessarily targeted in an investigation, but there is an investigation by a Texas sheriff about the planes of 
a plane of migrant workers that were apparently gathered up under false pretenses and put on a plane and flown to Florida from Texas where someone from Ron DeSantis's office or campaign or a parallel entity got on the plane and then they flew to Martha's Vineyard to dump migrant workers unannounced in a town of like 12 to 14,000 people as a gotcha to the from the Christians <laughs> a gotcha from the Christians uh, lying to a bunch of people and putting them on a plane and from most of those things are coming from local papers most or all seem to uh, factual reportings seem to say that all of them were in the country legally waiting for their court dates for uh, the next step in the immigration process. So I don't know. There, uh, there were things about get, being registered under fake names and all this other stuff. Uh, so I don't know if uh, Abbott and DeSantis will be linked to this, but they definitely made use of it. So their names are by it already. It's election season. I mean, DeSantis is trying to jiggle loose the still firm grip the last guy had on the neck of the Republican Party by being almost the same, but only being under one or two state or federal investigations instead of numerous. And that's after, like, we had, you know, the end of spring, the uh, Dobbs decision, uh, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, and then the Biden administration finally almost kind of completed. It depends on when you count the campaign promises, but the whole student debt relief made Dark Brandon's approval rating go from 37% in July up to 42% at the early September. Yeah, it's it's weird how doing things for a lot of people can uh, improve the public's view of you. That's, And it wasn't even a lot. I mean, it's a lot for some people, but compared to things that could be done, it wasn't really a lot. And it, what, the 5% five, 5 approval in America, where everybody pretty much is where they are and there's little bits of drifting. Um, I don't know. I think Biden wasn't my, he wasn't even, I think, my third choice or fourth choice in the primaries. But out of the two choices in the presidential election, he uh, was my choice. Ranked choice voting sure would be nice. He also said that he wasn't going to run for a second term. What else was there? There there was, a uh, speaking of... The guy in the office right now, uh, Joe Biden, I was sent a article from Fox News. I think the headline was the three biggest ways Biden is worth for infl worse for inflation. And I'll have to be honest, I am not really good. Surprise, surprise. I'm not the greatest with... Uh, math and economics and things like that and I will never pretend to be so this part will be pretty short most of most of the article was quoting a study by the uh, committee for a responsible federal budget and they said that Biden is r raising long-term debt uh, by for, for something trillion, when you look into the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, 
they are generally factual, but they skew right and they advocate. They've been long advocates for cutting things like Medicare and Social Security, which is what I think uh, Lindsey Graham said is one of the things that they intend to go after cutting if they uh, the Republican Party uh, regains control. Um, the The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget is largely funded by Peter G. the Peter G. Peterson Foundation that also targets Medicare and Social Security. Uh, they they went on to complain that uh, things like food stamps and cancellation of some student debt is trying to buy votes and keeping people from having to go back to work. I don't know. I that sort of makes me think of the. Mitch McConnell thing where he was talking about those, uh, what, $1,200 checks people got three years ago was keeping them from having to go back to work. And uh, again, it's not the $800 billion military budget. It's not all the millions of forgiven PPP loans to millionaires. It's food stamps and Social Security and $10,000 in student debt. That's that's really where the problem is. It's not those other things, right? And uh, <laughs> the third point that they made was that avoiding the railroad strike, which they themselves said would have cost $2 billion a day and lost commerce, investors are not happy because the rail workers got cost of living increase um cash bonuses of $1000 per year and a 24% increase overall in wages over the next 5 years while also saying that the cost of living is increasing at more than 8 8% annually already so, I guess if you're not paying attention to those numbers, everything's like, oh, yeah, that, that's definitely the rail workers. Yeah, I, I, well, I don't even know. I don't pretend to really know why, how that was phrased as a negative when it's like they're barely getting, they're, not, they're still not even really getting what the workers deserve. But anyway, and that was pretty much it. It was like the reasons why Biden is bad for inflation is because of aid to the poor. And again, this is, I wish he was that radical socialist that I'm told that he is, but this is, this would have maybe even been highly bipartisan stuff in the seventies or eighties. But so minor aid to the poor and to students and workers, they <laughs> they kept referring to big labor uh, as in uh, workers' unions in the article. It was so bizarre. Uh, so yeah, that was my book report on a gobbledygook Fox News article. And since they right now for whatever god awful reason it seems to kind of be Donald Trump versus Joe Biden in the imaginary election in 2024 and so really quick 34% of registered voters have a positive view of Donald Trump 54% have negative uh Biden it's 42% have positive and 47% have negative. And uh, going back to 2021, uh, the Quinnipiac poll had 34%, that same 34%, having a positive view on Trump and uh, 62% 
with a negative. So there's less negative, but also this poll was closing sometime around uh, the week or so after January 6th, 2021. So that was probably a pretty, pretty higher number up there. And I think that's probably going to be pretty much it for now. Uh, some of the other things I wanted to have more time to think about, at least with one of the other topics I thought might be more of a conversation thing, but I can do a little book report or the entomology of this usage of the word woke. Uh, but that could be... That's probably more fun as a group. Uh, we'll see what else before we go. For now, uh, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House of the U.S., says that she thinks that the Democratic Party is going to gain seats in this midterm. Historically, they haven't, and they're not looking super great with just general Democratic Party stuff and with gerrymandering and uh, with the census and all that uh, all meshed together. Who the fuck knows? Uh, Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, officially at the moment, uh, he told people, I think this week, that he thinks that they will not gain seats and will probably lose control in the house the senate is a bit more up for grabs because those are statewide elections that can't be gerrymandered at the very least uh there's just the uh, the other problems with our election our electoral system the you know, voter disenfranchisement and making yeah voting shouldn't be as hard as it is in in the states and that's its own episode um Things are going so fast, I don't even really know if I want to go into the DOJ versus Donald Trump stuff. A search warrant served at Mar-a-Lago about a year after the archives and the DOJ said that they needed classified documents back and stuff found in the office and supposedly all the stuff that says classified on Truth Social... It's declassified, but in all the court filings, they are not saying that it's been declassified. So it depends on if you want to go with the court filings or the fake Twitter uh, on which way that you think, which way leads towards the truth, I guess. I don't know. I probably skimmed over some shit that I could have gone on forever about and went on forever about things that I should have been brief on. Thank you. For the people that wrote in with questions and topics, take care of yourselves. Duck and cover. He did what we all must learn to do. You and you and you and you. Duck and cover.